All right, what's up, VC? I had pulled out a bunch of records yesterday. Well, all the records I got, well, some records that I got in May to do like an overhaul of the things I got in May. But things were pretty busy yesterday, so I got all the records here. Was gonna film that, and then um, got a box on the porch. So I'm pretty sure this is vinyl. So uh, I have an idea. It's not the UHQR because it would have said acoustic sounds on here. I did pre-order mine a while back. I didn't do it right away, but I did it after Chad had said on his YouTube channel that the first 6,000 were already spoken for, and that was like a day later. So I was like, damn. Or it was like a week later, maybe. A few, a few days to like a week later, he said the first 6,000 definitely already bought. So I was like, all right. If that took a three days to a week, there's only 25,000. You know, it's going to take about a month to sell out or so, maybe a month and a half, so, I, you know what I mean? So, and I'm glad I got mine. I thought it was 45 RPM, so I've seen it's not. Now I kind of like that it's not, that it's on one album, and it just looks old school. It has the same, the original Columbia logo. It's on a clearer vinyl than the Jethro Tull UHQR material, and uh, it's on a spat-ass gatefold. I just, I love the way it's, the, the box, I love way better than the one step, even though I haven't held one in my hand, just from what I've seen visually, they look amazing. So, and then, the, then you got this badass clear version of Kind of Blue, that's, they are saying the surface noise is like, and I'm not too, you know what I mean, whatever version you have, be thankful. A version I do recommend getting, well, which I was playing last night, which I have, I have the original master recording, which sounds great. A, a lot more bass than the original master recording, but a version I highly recommend getting is the mono pressing, and I got this for 24 bucks brand new, and was a little bit wobbly, a tiny little wobble on one side, but it comes in a clear slip, it has the original 6i, and I gotta say, super, 180 gram, it feels like one, yeah, it is 180 gram, it says it on there, and um, the edges, gosh damn, they knocked it out of the park, and I know you guys like, don't give a shit about the edges, but some of us might, I do, and this is like in the 8.2, 8.3 zone. You don't go 8.3 on this one. Just. Oh gosh, that's good. It's nice and smooth. That's how every record should be, in my opinion. And I, you know, if someone could explain. Stunty, could you explain to me the process on why some records have very smooth. And I can feel one little notch where it went around and cut, you know, but barely. And even this notch is really, it's smooth. But the this thing is like oval around the edges. Obviously, because it's thicker. So is it because maybe the thicker ones end up having rounder edges? I don't know. Somebody who works at a record plant could describe to me why some just have better edges and some don't. But that being said, this is a great version. This mono pressing sounds phenomenal. And for only $24, you know what I mean? You spend $100, that, that, that's not in everybody's budget. All right? And, and uh, you know, um, so if you can't get the UHQR, you're gonna be maybe a little bummed out, but if you know what I mean, if you really, really want it, maybe save a little bit and get you know what I mean, do what you gotta do to get it. But if you can't get that one, shit, the stereo version one at Walmart will blow your damn mind. I guarantee it. But, but if you don't mind having a few different copies, of spending, you know what I mean, get the UHQR, get the original, go with the mono pressing. I listened to it last night and I was like, gosh, damn, like, oh, uh, because I've been listening to my original master recording usually, so when I. Anyways, definitely get this. And like I said, it's not too pricey. So now let's get to the unboxing. I'm pretty sure I know what this is. I always like to try to go blank in my head. You know what I mean? It, but, um... Yeah, I would have been really excited though if it was if it said acoustic sounds. I would have had a you know, I mean, most likely it's that. So I would have been extra excited. Wow, they put a box within a box. That's cool. Can't be too careful. Okay. Well, what is this? Uh, uh, okay, now the back I don't even recognize. What the hell did I get? Oh, maybe it's to protect. 
Okay, okay. I'm like, they use the back from like a... Well, I don't even remember this classical album. So... They just did a good job on... Okay, they did a really great job on wrapping this thing. My dog's looking at me like, damn, we got enough shit here? But, like I said, hey, better to... We're pulling out scissors now. We're going to do a little cut on this tape. You know, I just watched Jeff Witcher's episode, man. This guy is straight going through your closets. <laughs> That's, that shit was a great episode, by the way. Go check out his late. He talks about um, some albums that he just ended up with. You know, accidentally. Or something like that. And then go watch how he accidentally ended up with these records. And you're going <laughs> to... Uh, what's very ironic... The VC is cool, but what's even more ironic, my bass player in the punk band looks like Jeff. <laughs> Very much similar. It's not just because they're both bald, I feel like their faces look similar. Alright, here it is, guys. Solstice, Ralph Towner. Still sealed. Alright? And you're like, on EC, Ralph Towner, Solstice. It's got Jan Gerbrek, Eber, uh, Eberhard Weber, John Christensen. I mean, I mean, gosh. And what's crazy, I'd never heard of Ralph Towner. I was just, I was looking for Tangerine Dream a while back, a couple months ago, because they did the soundtrack, they do a lot of soundtrack, but they did the soundtrack to Near Dark. And I was like, you know what? I should get just one of their albums. Well, going through the T's in the U section, I didn't find Tangerine, Tangerine Dream at the time, bummer, but I've seen this record, Ralph Towner, all brown. And, uh, let me grab it real quick. My dog is into this chew toy that's pretty much on its last leg. So, sorry for leaving you guys hanging. So, I got this. Three dollars. And that's how, it sh that's how it should be. An old ECM, the vinyl's in good condition, most fucking boring record cover of all time. But that's what also kind of, it said Ralph Towner, the name kind of grabbed me Solstice Sound and Shadows. And so I just went and they have a record player. And for three bucks, but when I pulled it out and I seen it was ECM, I was like, oh shit, I mean, this is going to be badass most likely. And it's 77, so it's like anything on ECM, 74 to the, night, to the early 80s. For some reason, just fucking killing it. Sorry for my language there. Right, this is... Shit, this is, it's on the last leg. She, and she's like... This is when it's like, I gotta throw it away here pretty soon. It's because she's gonna try to get some. I'm more worried that she's gonna choke on that chunk. So, here you go. Go for it, but just turn a fucking teddy bear right now. So, uh, so, anyways, I got that Ralph Towner. And it was kind of, uh, and it was cool because I, it was a blind buy. I really didn't know. I mean, I listened to the record store and I, I knew right away that I was gonna love it. I, I, all I had here was like 10 seconds. I was like, oh. Don't even want to hear her anymore. I want to get home and kind of just trip out. So, so that album blows my mind. And then there's others. They're very similar to like, you know, Michael Nora. His album Vanessa sounds very similar to this one. Well, Vanessa came out in '74, I'm pretty sure. And this one came out in '77. And you know, but then you have like Pat Metheny's Off Ramp, which is on the same label. Totally different, similar vibe though. Um, then you got Gary Burton Quintet. This album sounds very similar to the Michael Nora, and this because the label is doing these cool. And if, what do you want to call them? Jazz fusion? I just call it badass music. So yeah, let me open this the rest of the way. Because they take the case. You, that's one thing I don't like. They. I think I can manage though. If you're going to do the, the scotch tape, you know you can make like a little holder on the actual piece of tape by folding it over the little edge and you give it a little handle so then it's easier to take off. Something I figured out when I was a kid. Oh yeah, what's up? Alright, I would, I know, I want to take some pictures of it. Um, gosh damn. It's just still sealed, so fingers crossed. You know, because sometimes you don't know. If that's something, you know what I mean? And somebody made a remark, I had an extra primus suck on this and someone made the remark saying, you know, actually, having a sealed copy, if you don't, you don't even know if you can play all the way through. 
That's true. I mean, so if you got multiple copies, keep a couple, leave a couple, you know what I mean? Then leave one sealed. You know what I mean? Whatever. You already got something that got to have good playability. But you can't really promise the person that it's going to play all the way through. Knock on wood here. I don't want to jinx myself. But, but anyways, and again, you, I, this is still sealed. So I paid like 20 something. 20 bucks worth or something like that on the good old eBay. But it shows the old price tag here. $5.96. I mean, brand new back in the day. This, you know I mean, and you could get this in your jazz section. You know, it's got a little ring wear. I mean, it's from 77, so, or what year? It's 75. Oh, this is going to be between Michael Moore's Vanessa. Next, between 74. Yes, this is going to be crazy. I have listened to a little bit, but I didn't want to listen too much. I knew I was going to love the shit out of this. So. Super excited. Um, you know what? I was on, I'm pretty sure it was a vinyl archive, was live streaming. I was throwing out a couple movies. And then, you know, I'm 40 years old. It's funny, you know, I mean, I don't feel 40. I don't feel like I should feel like I should at 40. I remember, like, when you're 20, you would meet 40 year olds, and you know what I mean? If I give them a gut punch, you know what I mean? Get out of here, old fucker. But um, uh, now I'm that old fucker. You know, now I'm getting gut punch. You know what I mean? So, um, I'm totally joking here, but, um, so, but my point is you, I'm like, dude, yeah, of course you know of a lot of movies. You're fucking old. And I know like this compared. And I said this quote someday when I'm 90, I'll look back like, dude, at 40, you were a spring fucking chicken. I can't believe you thought you were like, you were claiming you're old on your YouTube channel, which now is, you can't delete. So, so yes. And like I said to someone else who said, oh, I'm older than you, you know, the older, the movie, Remo Williams, fucking rad movie. This dude was dodging bullets way before the Matrix. <coughs> that was a coffee cough. Before the Matrix, this guy was dodging bullets, running on just doing dope bad shit, okay? And when he, in this movie, I don't want to break down too much if you haven't seen it, but it's basically this cop who they fake his death, they give him plastic surgery. And they name him Remo Williams. And, I, and you're going to laugh where they get the name from. I leave that jewel for yourself. But they take him to this sensei to train him to be the ultimate badass. And he goes to this place and he tries to shoot this badass. And this dude just like this. He's dodging bullets. So they, they end up having to, you know, this guy has to move in with this, this sensei to learn how to be the ultimate badass. And basically they're training him to like work for the government to be like an ultimate assassin. So... He, uh, he asks the sensei one day, who loves to watch soap operas, it's fucking hilarious, this movie's genius by the way, it's one of my favorite, one of my definitely, one of my favorite action movies. He asks him, hey, how old are you dude, you know? And he says, exact words I'm pretty sure, he says, compared to a head of lettuce, I am old, but compared to a mountain, my life has barely began, or begun. So. And so he's like, oh, cool. I still don't know your fucking age. That's awesome. And sorry for the bad language here. I'm just, you know what I mean? We're just going. This is this is the adult channel, right? Come on now. Wait, I don't mean like the adult channel. You know, this is... <laughs> Either way, guys. So, a few movies mentioned because I realized, you know what I mean? Yeah, you should know of more movies by, if you're older than someone else. You should, most likely, because you're older. You know what I mean? And there's nothing wrong with that. Being old. You don't really start doing cool shit till your 70s. I'm just being real here. Like, fucking, if you're a scientist, mu a mus musician, magician, anything, a writer, you're really not cracking out your good shit till you hit your 70s because that's just, that's truth, that's truth. And if you don't make it there and you were like badass Hendrix who did shit at 27, okay, okay, we're thankful. Just imagine what Hendrix would have been doing in his 70s. Okay, no fuck, I'm gonna get teary eyed right now. But for whatever reason, we don't, we, you know, I mean, the good thing is he in, he inspired so many people that, that can make it do shit in the seventies. But you know, we don't beat yourself up ever on your age. Be thankful, no matter how old you are. And like I said, the first time the first thing I did when I got a, not one of the first things. But I remember when I had a calculator when I was younger. I said three sixty five times eighty. I mean, this wasn't like a smart math in my head. I just had a calculator. I said twenty nine thousand two hundred. So I was like, wow, that's. A, I just remember in my head. I do. I love numbers though. So I was like, you know, that's a I don't think I'm like around 42 million minutes. But I'm like, um, you don't finish school till you're basically 20. You know what I mean? So you gotta take a chunk out right there. I think I'm around like 17,000 days old now. Like that. Anyways, it's like, um, 
16,000 something. Either way, you, you gotta, um, you, uh, it's a short time, so enjoy it. You know what I mean? It's short and long all at the same time. Now, on that weird philosophy rant there, we're gonna just so, uh, so, I was talking about USA Nightmares. Saturday Nightmares on the USA Network, back in the day. This is back in the 80s. Late 80s. Let's see, just to promise you. Anyways, there was this movie they did called Nightmare on 13th Floor, and it was basically how hotels, you know, sometimes they'll skip the number 13, even though the 14th floor is really the 13th floor. But, in this movie, the 13th floor was, a, there was an actual 13th floor, you're really skipping and then they had like this axe murder in that it was like by the fireplace with the desk with the axe. It just fuck, I was like, I thought it was scary shit. It made me afraid of ho if we ever stayed in a big hotel, I was like searching for the hidden thirteenth floor. And this is a very hard one to get. It was on Made for TV Collection, yes, because this is like all the shit that they played on Saturday Nightmares. And after Saturday Saturday Nightmares would come on Alfred Hitchcock presents, I think, or Ray Brad, and then Ray Bradbury, and then Up All Night with Gilbert Godfrey. And now I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they those were that was a sequence. This is on here. All right, Invaders from Mars. Now, this version you don't ever hear about. It's by Toby Hopper. This version's fucking killer. Again, I'm just cussing a lot. That's a pain ode to my father. My dad loved to drop the F-bombs back in the day. And uh, so, Invaders from Mars. Great movie. Basically, the kid wakes up. His parents are weird. His teachers are weird. You know the story. He collects pennies. I collect coins. I just thought this was dope when I was a kid. And uh, it's, again, these ones are kind of hard to find, but like, if you, you know, in your local pawn shop, you might find them. Pulse. This is the old Pulse from 86. Make sure when this movie came out. I'm pretty sure this is 86. I have this on VHS also. I click VHS also. I have them mainly at my cabin because I like to be old school at the cabin and watch VHS. But uh, this movie, Pulse. Basically, this little kid, electricity in his house is acting all weird. In the house across the street, some weird shit happened with electricity. It's basically electricity is fucking bad, and it's fucking shit up. And, it, and it's showing in the movie the way the electricity is moving. Some cool effects on the way the electricity is going through the wires and stuff, and just kind of ahead of its time on the the effects they were using. But um, the kid has a skateboard. When I was a little kid, I skated. Still have a big skateboard collection. Um, so. You know, great one. And it's hard to find because there's a lot of other movies called Pulse. But the original one is from the mid-80s. And uh, go check this out. And again, some of these movies you can't stream. Eighty-eight, nineteen eighty-eight. Okay, sorry. 1988 Pulse. Go trip out. Now, the main reason I... These, these four packs are kind of cool sometimes. This is all good movies on here, but the main reason I got this four pack was from the movie Brain Scan. And don't get me, these are all great. I'm trying to diss on Friday Night and stuff. But Brain Scan, you don't ever see on DVD. It's a great movie. When we were little kids, we were in high school when the movie came out. And uh, it's about playing virtual reality. You play this game, and the shit in the game is really happening in real life. So and it was just a good movie. And you don't find it often, but check it out. Brain Scan it has Edward Norton, the kid from Terminator 2, who, that, that was like his movie, his follow-up movie, kind of, because he was got really famous, you know, from being in Terminator 2. He was on Arsenio Hall, I'm pretty sure. Could be wrong. All right, the last one. It's a movie I just love watching, and it's something you can relate to as you start fucking with your lawnmower and you start using your leaf blower more. And you just see, you notice, you know, your neighbor opens their garage at a certain time. The Burbs. This movie's genius right here. It has a Western-type soundtrack to it, so it, uh, I mean, it, it, it's going to be in a Western theme, but it's not in the Western cowboy area. It's in the damn neighborhood, a suburban neighborhood, the Burbs. And the one neighbor, so it's got Tom Hanks, and it's got the, his neighbor is like, his neighbor is kind of like if I was the neighbor, because he's like, walks in the kitchen, <laughs> there's a scene where he's in the house, and the wife gives him a plate of breakfast, you know what I mean? And then after he's done eating the breakfast, he wanders to the fridge, and he pulls out the rack of leftover ribs and starts grubbing the ribs. And then he starts, he gets Tom Hanks all worked up about the neighbors might be up to something suspect. And then there, it's him, it's Tom Hanks, the other guy, and then this other army veteran guy. And they're spying on the new neighbors, so hardcore. And it's just, it's super hilarious. A classic movie. And this isn't really a horror movie, this is more of a comedy. But, you know I mean, they're, they think these neighbors are killers, and you got to find out if the neighbors are or not. But, 
uh, definitely funny and super fun to watch. So, alright, this episode went 10 minutes too long. It was mainly going to be an unboxing. I'm going to have to stop now because I want to do another episode where I show you what I got for May. And I'm probably not going to do that today. And if I do, so be it. Alright, guys. I still have some coffee left, so I'm going to have to... I'm going to enjoy the rest of my coffee after I open this record. I'm going to spin the record and enjoy the coffee. And you guys are thinking, Ty, you don't need any more coffee, you hyper weirdo. And I am one of those people that has an extreme amount of energy. I was like, even when I go on tour, I don't drink caffeine. This, I am drinking caffeine right now, but just to, for the safety of my friends and my bandmates and the van, no caffeine. But uh, but I do sleep. I do like uh, uh, you know, I mean, I'm you know, if I don't have to do anything important in the morning. I don't have to wake up for anything important. I'm staying up usually till four to seven a.m. and I'm spinning records the whole night, playing music. So you know, I mean, that's what I say when I you know. I mean, this happens, and this has been like this since I was a kid, so, and I'm thankful for that. I love music. I love theater. The way you can, like, I'm, people are like, I remember one time when I had to have a teacher, and I would sleep through class. Though in classes at school, I would sleep. I sleep like a baby. When my friend's driving, I sleep like a baby. I see, I even sleep like a baby when I drive sometimes. I'm just joking. But one teacher had a good advice. I remember I would just sleep in every class, because, you know, I'm just thinking about music. So... He said, Ty, you're going to be, you know, he didn't know I had like an extreme amount of natural energy, which I don't want to tell my superpowers, but no, I'm joking here, but he, he said, if you always act like, you know, lean around like you're tired, you're going to be tired. And, and he, there was some truth to that. You know what I mean? So for the respect of my teacher, because the fact that my te this teacher tried to even teach me a lesson, I respected that, even though I was a, I was the kind of kid that opened mustard and bounced it off a few people's heads, you know what I mean? Not the whole package, just a little bit, you know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? Get, it, get the art spread out even. Sorry. Anyways, that was, I think, in a math class, to be honest with you. But anyways, this teacher, he took the time. So, you know what I mean? I respect, you know, and I think that has something to do with it. But the other way you can kind of grab the energy, kinetic energy is real. This watch I have, and one of the reasons I love this, um, this watch it doesn't take a battery. Just every time it moves, it winds. It's why it has a little fucking magnet in the back that winds up to wires. But it's kinetic energy. Now, right now the Earth is traveling at 18.6 miles a second. Okay, the Sun and this is you know I mean you can go read some Stephen Hawking. If I, if you are going to read any Stephen Hawking, I recommend Black Holes and Baby Universes. Super good book and it's super funny and you'll burn through it in one day. It's not that big. So there's a lot of movement going on. And I'm trying to get weird on you guys. I'm just this is the weird math stuff I love talking about with my other. I only have a couple of other friends that are like hardcore nerds about stuff like this. The sun's traveling like at 40,000 miles per hour, something weird like that. And, you know, the planets are all following it. Unless you're a flat earther. Which I respect, knuckles to the flat earthers. But, um, all this energy, so, like, if you think about it, the energy, you know I mean? Where does electricity in your brain come from to shock the nerves, to make you move your lips so you can speak? And, you know I mean, there's a lot. The, the math equation to measure out electricity is so precise that if it was off a little bit, you would bite your tongue off. But if it was off by, like, 0. 0.000, you know, 1. So I'm just, you know I mean? And again, these are weird rants. Don't worry. If you tap out by now, I get it. But if you think about it, you're on a moving fast ball, basically. And that energy, you can consume it, and that's what's happening already naturally. That's what I'm, you know, I mean, this is my philosophy here. But either way, so try to sometimes think about that. You can gather it, consume it, transform it into super energy. You know? <laughs> All right, guys. Now that we just had philosophy, spiritual, math talk, like and subscribe if you enjoy these the record rants. Go be supportive of all the other channels. Go like and subscribe. Go throw some comments. You know what? And even go shit. If you like a video of someone else's, I know this sounds, I'm trying to tell you what to do, but I'm recommending what you could do to even help these channels get more views and more, get their algorithm more pumped up, is you share their video to your fake, your, to your social media. You know what I mean? That's nothing bad. You know what I mean? What the hell? Why not? You, If you share their video, um, a few friends might click on it. And then that's gonna get, and then maybe even might subscribe to it if they enjoy the video. So anyway, just shout out, just to think. I'm not, and I'm not recommending you share my videos, but if there's a video you like in the BC, hey, boop, boop, and I'm, hey, if you're already doing that, what's up? You're way ahead of the game. So that being said, that being said, stay positive and play lots of vinyl, and don't drink too much caffeine. Later, guys. Bye.